Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for watching. This is Michael Zuworth, One Rental at a Time, and I'm back with legendary investor Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? I am here, Michael. How are you? I'm doing very well, man. Thank you for doing this. As always, every week, you got an amazing playlist. I don't know if people realize there's over hundreds, over 100 hours of you and I talking over the last year and a half or almost two years together. So pretty amazing stuff. Uh, we are about to disagree, uh, which the audience always loves. So uh, I put out a live stream yesterday talking about uh, or really putting out stats because there's a channel uh, that's talking about 2021 is just like 06 and that we are about to experience the biggest crash ever. Get out now. I disagree with that. And we did just a very short talk beforehand and you disagree with me. You think we are in the greatest residential real estate bubble. So I thought we should talk about because I'd love to see where I'm wrong. Well, first, tell me about what you're describing, because number one, 06 is interesting to me in terms of that versus 09, because the mm -hmm. crash was 09. And that was actually a bigger bubble, higher valuations than the peak. My market was 0405. You want to call it 06. It may have peaked 0506 nationwide. Yeah. But values were higher in 0809 than they were in 0506. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I used the I used the year that this gentleman chose, 06. I looked in the highest statistical number for housing prices was 06. It was like October of 06 or something. Like okay. again, we're well, talking maybe, nationally. Yeah. So these are national numbers, not local, because once you get local, all game's over. So national housing market. Uh, and basically the the story is get out now. And when okay. I did, when I did, I did a bunch of research, right? Because I was like, what am I missing? So I looked at 2021 to 06 and I collected like 10 or 11 stats and I'll just go through them quickly with you. And, and uh, first available inventory, right? As you know, we have a housing shortage. So we have about 1.3 million homes available for sale today. Back in 06, 3.7. So we had roughly three times more available homes that year. Another one that was interesting was housing appreciation from 04. So 04, 05, 06 was a whopping 48% nationally, which is way unhealthy. 19, 20, 21, as of right now, that, that's 24%. So we did have a big last year at 15, but right now it's, it's half that. This is a big one for me. 30-year interest rate, 6.41%. Today, 2.88 and probably going lower. Uh, another one for me is I'm a big believer in generational trends. Uh, so I, in the median, median first time home buyers, 31. So I did math, you know, 2006 minus 31 is 1975. So we had uh, 3.1 million births in 1975, 2021 minus 31 is 1990. We had 4.2 million births. This does not include migration which I didn't research, but I should have. I'm guessing migration is higher now. Uh, these are also some bigger ones that really drive me crazy because I, I experienced the run-up. I actually ask you this question. In 2006, of all the mortgages originated, Greg, do you know what percentage of them were adjustable rate mortgages? Yeah, probably more than half. It was exactly half, 50%. Great guess. Not many people get that. Here's a crazy one. Neg AM loans. Remember those pay option arm loans? You know what percentage they 25%. were? 25%. Yeah. It's just a crazy number. So if you fast forward to today, so again, 50% of mortgages were arms in 06. Do you know what percentage they are in 2021? I bet you 5%. 2.2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And guess how much, guess what percentage of Neg AM loans we're doing today? Oh, less than 1% probably. Zero. They're not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're illegal. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, let's do the last two. So average home price in 06 peaked at 243, again, nationally speaking. Uh, today it's 287, so it's higher. But when you take those payments or take those values and then you put in the interest rates we talked about earlier, 6.41 in 06, you're, uh, you got to do apples to apples. So I assume 20% down. So based on a 243 purchase, 20% down, the payment's roughly 1,200. 287, which again is higher value, 20% down, lower interest rate, your payment's actually 960. So your payment's lower today, even though the price is higher. So that's that's just sampling of the data I collected to show that two, the, what 2021 is not 06. My big argument is twofold. 
one, what I experienced last time are the once the once the values got hit, all the adjustable rate mortgages, especially the neg am loans, um, started causing huge pain and it just dominoed. You couldn't get out of the way. We don't have that today. There's very, very little adjustable rate mortgages happening today. And oh, by the way, our payments are lower. And our I didn't even do this. I should have. Your income, incomes have to be up in 15 years. So again, nationally speaking, I see a rather healthy real estate market. Now there are bubble markets, which I'm not gonna, we're not gonna debate that. But nationally speaking, I do not see a housing bubble today. We could be forming one. We could be at the early start but I don't see a, a bubble today. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah, so if we're looking at it from a national standpoint, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, 06, I guess values were higher um, at that point than they were in 09. And I do remember the peak of our market was 0405, yeah. then it tailed off from there. And I remember stuff was going up like crazy. So 40% is easy to believe. And remember, I remember interest rates were over 5% back then and, and Pay option arms were, you know, new interest only LIBOR oh, loans were new. Yeah. You could get loans based off LIBOR for the first time back then. That's when they started a 405. Um, I was using a lot of pay option arms, Yeah, you know, where you could select your payment, either um, low interest amortized or uh, negative amortized. Yeah, people interest. people may not even know what those are, right? Again, an, yeah. an AGAM loan, it, in my experience, gave you four options, fully 30, for, full payment, 30 years which means principal interest, full payment, 15 years, principal and interest, interest only. And then they selected a negative a neg am loan, which just to say the full payment was two grand, they would say pay a grand and we'll stick the thousand bucks on the back end of the loan. So again, yeah, a it was pay called minimum on. payment option and it was yep. really, really low. And then it's, you know, basically think about a minimum payment on a credit card, you know, kind of yeah, exactly. the same way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so those things were, were popular. And then, you know, things tailed off, you know, interest rates went up, the market started dipping. And I remember we had a little lull between 06, 07. Uh, and then it started shooting back up again uh, before the crash in 08, 09. So we had about a year there where it kind of cooled off mm -hmm. before it went back up. So values did dip a little bit. And that's why I tell everybody is really it took us until 2017 to 2018 to get back to 0405, 06 values. levels. Yeah, values. Right. Yes. Values. So we really didn't reach those values. And based on what you just said, that's about right. Because if we're up, you know, 20% from where we were, you know, yeah. in terms of gains in, in 06. Exactly. Then, you know, that makes sense. So it's taken that long. So we really are from a value standpoint, probably at a healthy level based on normal, expected rates of appreciation in real estate. The problem is what's skewing it, like you said, certain markets where, you know, values are up 30, 40, 50% or more, yeah. you know, for certain houses in certain areas versus the national average where it's only up mildly. And then to your point, interest rates are just unbelievably low. It's don't just, know if they can get any lower. No, I don't know. Because banks have to make some yes. kind of spread. Agreed. Investors, they're just not going to do loans and the government... I mean, that's really the only way they could get any lower is if the government's buying every single loan out there at one or 2%. You oh, know? That's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's really, really fascinating. Now, here's the kicker. Here, here's what I wonder and sure. what could create a bubble. Okay. Is values are extremely high because the rates are artificially low. So Agreed. payments are low. Everybody's buying payments. Absolutely. All totally the buyers agree. we know right now are millennials, 30s. Yeah. You know, people in their 30s plus or minus. That's the bulk of the buyers. We agree. They haven't been through a housing depreciation like we have. They haven't yeah. seen values get cut in half. Yeah. So certainly not bought, as owners. Yes. They have not yeah. seen it as owners. They, they've if read about bought, it, right? <laughs> yeah. If you bought a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar house or a million dollar house and you put 20% down, which you have to, unless yeah. you're a first time buyer, there's different programs out there. But let's say you put 20% down. So that's sure. 60 to a hundred thousand dollars yes, to 200,000, depending on the value of the house that you've put into it and everything's hunky dory. But then let's say rates go up and all of a sudden housing market changes, values drop. Now your house is worth 40% less. All your equity has been wiped out, but your payment is still low. Absolutely. You, you gotta live you somewhere. Feel? Yeah. You have to live somewhere, but you've lost all that wealth. Sure. And when rates are up like that and the markets are bad, and the economy's not doing great, and we are in deflation, sure. you have to look at what happened the last time. Well, it took from 2008, nine until, you know, it took 10 years for values to come back. Totally agree. So the question is, 
how are people going to feel about that, especially ones that potentially have to move? See, that's see now. OK, let's have this conversation. So yeah. one of the reasons that the, the last time was clearly a bubble is once once value started coming down, the debt structure, 50 percent of our loans were adjustable rate mortgages. So, again, my belief is as long as you're employed and as long as you're working. I mean, you're going to be annoyed that your house is worth less, but you're going to make the payment because you got to live somewhere. Yeah. Right. But what happened last time is not only did the housing lose value, but then the you had this payment shock at the two year mark, sometimes at the three year mark, where suddenly your payment went from twelve hundred to like thirty two hundred. And you're like, I do not need to live here for thirty two hundred bucks because I can rent down the street for eighteen hundred. Right. So it was that it was that combination that led to the famous word strategic default. Given the debt structure we have today, Greg, I do not see that happening. Yes, there'll be one, three, five, seven percent of the people where life happens, they get divorced, they get a job move, they get something that makes them a motivated seller. Sure, that's a normal market, uh, but we're not well, going to have the so cascading. Let's define, let's define what we're talking about. So, sure. bubble is value. Sure. Agreed. Not not necessarily a housing market crash or collapse. It's a value okay. conversation. So when you say housing market bubble to me, well, that means prices are at all time highs. How sustainable are they? Mm -hmm. They're only sustainable as long as the rates stay low. To me, we're in a bubble. Okay. That bubble could pop at any minute as soon as rates go up. That's all it's going to take. Yeah. Housing so the market is done. No, no. So so let's define done because I totally agree. The the, the variable that you must watch is the 30 year more 10 year than 30 year mortgage 30 year mortgage you get above four percent we have a problem they get above five percent we're done but now let's define what done means in my world done means transaction stop stop like stop i guess the only people we'll be buying would be cash buyers because they don't really care they don't have interest but basically inventory stops or transaction stops which means inventory swells because real estate's not like stocks it doesn't change overnight inventory swells and then what you're going to have, in my opinion, is you're going to have some people that don't have to move. They'll take their properties off the market. Then you will have what I love to find, the motivated seller. Motivated sellers are going to take a discount. And values on those transactions that do transact in a 5% world uh, will sell for less. They, they'll have right. to. So what's going to trigger all this and why would somebody be motivated? So that's really the conversation. It's going to take some time for people to get motivated. So if you don't have to sell and you have a locked in long-term rate. What I'm saying is we're done as rates go up, values come down. Yep. So you bought at, you know, today's prices, Sure. rates go up. Now markets drop 20, 30%. It takes a long time for that to sink into somebody's exactly. head. Exactly. Yes. So yes. you're you're talking. To, I've seen it. I've seen it yeah. two or three times in my Me career too. where it takes a year to eighteen it's months. It's not overnight. That, right. So that's why inventory levels will grow because sellers will be stuck in what they paid or what they think values are, what their tax value might be. Oh yeah, the, the assessed value yes. is yeah. totally different. So it takes a while for that to wash out. So when I say we're done, that's what I mean. Sellers won't sell. Inventory levels will rise. Values will come down. Totally agree. Interest rates are up. So people can afford less house. So that's kind of what changes things. Now, I'm not saying that's going to cause a, there's a difference between a bubble popping in values of housing and a collapse of the housing market. Agreed. And like you said, the difference between now and 06, 08, 09 in the collapse is the, is the health of the borrower and the health of the banks that have loaned the money. Agreed. And now the Fed's willingness, desire, and ability mm -hmm. to prop all that up if and when it did have a problem. And you're not seeing what happened back then. I mean, so single family homes, it's a $36 trillion yeah. value in the United States. That's about the value of the houses in the United States, 36 trillion. Damn, um, that's you know, that's not including condos, no, townhouses, houses, and multi single family. Yeah. Right. That gets up to 80 trillion, I think, when you add everything in. Oh my God. Wow. In, in housing. That's why it was such a big problem back then. And what had happened was all of that got levered up a hundred to one. Oh yeah. In terms the of the way CEOs and these LGS. credit default swaps and you know, CEOs Horrible. and all these things were created, derivatives upon derivatives. Yeah. All this, you know, it was unbelievable, you know, 
um, how yeah, that got levered up. The and, weight of that was just, it was a collapse. It really was. It was like the, the underlying rooms, asset so, was in, yeah, it was in trouble. So yeah, so we I totally don't know agree. What that, that individual is talking about. Are they talking about values? Are they talking about, you know, the actual market itself in terms of the mortgages? So, so this is essentially what he's saying and why I have such a huge problem with it is I, I think you and I both agree, right? If interest rates get above 5%, the market stops and we will see a cool down, right? In talking values. In value. Yeah. What he is saying is it's going to pop. It'll pop by the end of this year and um, get out. And I'm like, oh my God, there is nothing. The interest rates today could go to 5% and the real estate market would stop but you would not see values fall instantly. It's not a stock. It's not crypto. It's mm -hmm. time. And, and again, 98% of the people have fixed rate mortgages. They wouldn't care. It would take months and quarters to start. It doesn't yeah, collapse very, like that. Very, very different. You know, what happened last time was number one, you had bad loans. Oh, number yeah. two, Horrible you loans. had oversupply. So you got to remember, and what this person probably doesn't know or doesn't remember or had, didn't experience, I don't know how old they are, there were subdivisions all over the country, especially out in Vegas, of thousands and thousands yeah. of homes that were being built on spec by developers that were vacant. Yeah, they were so, building hundreds at a time. Now they do 10 at a time. Right. So there is no housing. So we have a shortage as it is right now. You could foreclose on every house in forbearance and still you'd burn nothing. through them in probably a couple of months. It's nothing. Um, yeah, It's crazy. Yeah. So, so it's very different in that regard. So it'll take a while to work through it. There's no way you're going to have a collapse in values or nope. even a housing market issue by the end of this year. Just, no chance. By the end of 2021, yeah. no chance. Zero yeah, chance. Yeah, the math doesn't work, but- um, yeah, it's just nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, very, it's a very different environment, very different market, very different economy. We don't have the oversupply in any sector other than commercial, you know, and oh, yeah, I'm for talking sure. retail office specifically. Agreed. Um, multifamily is still undersupplied in most markets. Yeah. Um, rental housing is still undersupplied in most markets. And, yep. you know, there's another big fallacy out there that, you know, like these Black Rocks and all those guys are buying up all the houses. Yeah. That just isn't true. I mean, not true. A very small ownership percentage of rental housing in the country. Actually, the biggest owners are private individuals like you. Yeah. Yeah, we own yeah. rental houses. Yeah. I mean, that makes up more investor ownership than like Black oh, Rock by, and all those other guys. Yeah, you I've actually done the math on this because I, I don't like the talk track that's out there, right? Institutional buyers, which I'll plug BlackRock in and all other hedge funds, they make up about one percent mm. of rental houses, not so like it's one percent of a smaller number, right? So I don't know, pretend like there's 50 million homes in America. If 10 of 10 million of those are rental homes, meaning the other 40s owner ox, BlackRock is one percent of the smaller number. People like me, we make up uh, over fifty percent of that smaller number. So yeah, they're yeah they're interesting. And again, remember what I just said: the value of single-family homes right now, and it just gained two trillion here in the last quarter. Yeah, right now that's true. It's about thirty-six trillion dollars. There's no way that's the that's that's more than the GDP of this country. There is no investment fund out there with that much money that can buy every house in the country. It's just not happening. They no. they can be annoying. If you're an investor like me and they come into your market, they could be annoying because they will overpay because again, they're not looking for cash flow. They're looking for preservation of capital. Their business model is different. And if they're in your market, they can be annoying, but they're so easy to beat. Big fish are lazy. They have a buy box that's this big and you just buy around them and let them help you. It's yeah. And kind the biggest, a, the biggest asset manager out there, I think, is it Blackstone or BlackRock? One of them, Rock, but they're a trillion Rock. or something like that, or a couple trillion. Yeah, Black so Rock's again, the they're two trillion. So if they took every dollar they had in their management and bought houses with it, they'd still only be able to buy, you know, 10% yeah, of the housing stock in the country. And, you know, they're only allocating a very, very small percentage of what they manage. Oh yeah. It's, maybe it's maybe like, 50 it, to a hundred billion. Yeah, know, it's, it is. Trillion. It's a hundred billion. It's a hundred billion dollars they have set aside for this. Yeah, very year. small, very, very small, small amount of money that they're allocating into housing, which arguably it probably should be more, you know, I mean, yeah, exactly. Watch out. Anything else right now. Yeah. Um, well, this is fun. Uh, folks, this was a great conversation. We totally agree. I actually thought we were going to disagree, but we agree. Uh, next, uh, next one, pay attention. Cause we're actually going to talk about some bubble markets. I do think there are bubble markets in real estate. Uh, so for the first time, I'm going to put it out there and, and we're just going to have a conversation. So Greg, how can people find you? So it's gregdickerson.com. All my information is there. It uh, YouTube podcast. I put out videos every day. I talk about entrepreneurship, real estate, investing, development. I talk about um, buying companies, starting companies. I talk about the economy, cryptos, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Follow Greg Dickerson. Check him out. It's amazing stuff. Over a hundred hours of him and I talking. Link below. Thanks, buddy.